and welcome to this short guide of using Adobe Spark that we're going to be using to make your blogs. So I've just started off here. I've typed in Adobe Spark into the magical Google. It will take me through. You'll come to this lead page. You're going to enable all there. Now, do not pay. You do not need to pay. So Adobe Spark, as you're going to see in a moment, is a suite of services that are brilliant. They're used a lot in the classroom. We're going to have a look into some of the things you can do with Adobe Spark, but we're going for the free account. You do not need to pay. So I've already set up an account, so I'm going to sign in. You'd need to register. So you can sign in with any of these. I'm using Google. You can obviously use Facebook, Apple, your own email. It's probably going to be easier to use your uh, university email, but my login is, look at all these. <laughs> so we're gonna log in now. So Spark Post is made by the larger company, which is Adobe, you may have heard of. Uh, it's got a number of services. There's different things here. Wow, your social media game is really gonna be enabled by this. So there's all these different things you can do. You can use graphics, you can set up posters. There's some of the recent projects that I've set up. You can see here. What we're interested though in for making your blog is this blue button at the top on the left hand side, the plus sign, and we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna go to web page. Now I know we're making a blog, the web page is similar to a blog, you'll see what I mean. It takes a few moments depending on what you're using. So here you can see this is a blank canvas. First thing we're going to start with is themes. So that was in the top right hand corner. We've got storybook, all these different things. Okay, so I'm going to choose well, that one's lower. Gonna, this is Trek. So let's just call this. So to add a title, all you do is click on there. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. There we go. So you double click and it write. So this is as an example, my blog. And underneath then I can write AOA to. So for you, sorry, there's a bit of a lag because obviously I'm recording the screen. So what you would do is you can put your blog title there and then you could start to write here. Now at the bottom, you've got a plus sign. So at the moment, you can add a photo if you want. Remember for your marks, you obviously get marks for including multimedia. So as you scroll down, you don't have to just put a picture. You've got all these different options. So you can include a photo. We're gonna go through these options now. You can include text, you can include a button, a video, photo grid, a glide show, and a split layout. I'll show you all these in a moment. We'll start with photo. So say you're writing a blog about, I don't know, let's say technology. So you can find free photos. If you don't have your own photo, let's just put technology. Now this will search a whole bank of images that are free that you can use. Double click on there and it's put straight into your blog with the text will overlay on the top. So it's starting to look quite cool already. So you might want to write a little caption. So you can add a caption there. VR in education. If you wanted to Maybe you've been out in school on your placement. Maybe you've been in a school, you've had some previous images. Obviously check with the school before you use them, but you can upload a video, which is here, or there's all these different options. Maybe you've got them saved on Dropbox, on your Google Photos, if you've got an Android phone, or if they're saved on your Google Drive. You may, if you haven't just sounded like absolute gobbledygook, if you don't know what these things are, then that's absolutely fine mainly you're going to be using the upload photo which is the same as you'd be uploading any normal photo on powerpoint or i really like using the find the free photos adobe stock 
Adobe obviously are a massive company and they've got a bank of images as well. So you might want to put in education. Again, these are all free images that you can use and you can drop into your blog. Got to have them all at, haven't you? And again, you've got all these options. You can play with all these. I'm just showing you some examples. Worth pointing out with Adobe stock, because they are trademarked, you will get that um, stamp across it. It's absolutely fine. You're not going to get marks taken off for that. If you've got your own images, that would be absolutely brilliant, especially if it's from pit placement. If you don't, then that's fine, as long as it's relevant to the post that you're writing about. Okay. So text is probably going to be the thing that you use most on your blogs. So you can obviously write text if you can spell straight into your blog. So you can write your whole blog post here. Some students last year, they wrote them all on the word, a word document, and then they would copy and paste to different blogs. I personally, would just write your blog straight into here. The only people that are going to see your blogs are yourself and your tutor, which you're going to invite, which I'll show you in a moment. So obviously you can change, you can move all these different things. It doesn't matter. No one's going to see them. Buttons. So again, you're going to get marks for including links. So you could add a button, which might take you through to a link. So you might be talking about Welsh Government. You might be talking about... I don't know, you might be talking about uh, teachers being taken over by robots and you might find a link to a new story. You can drop the text in there. You can change the alignment, save, and the button will appear. Another great thing you can do is you can add in video. You can add these in from Vimo, uh, Vimeo, from YouTube, and from Spark Video. It usually works best from YouTube so if you've got a video from YouTube that you found that is relevant to your blog, drop it in here and it looks really good. Okay. Photo grid, again, it's just another way of presenting your images. So say you've got a few images, maybe you've got some placement of being out in school and you wanted to demonstrate those in a different way, then you can do it like this. It looks quite nice. So we'll save them. So you can start to see now our blog is starting to take shape. Obviously, you'll have a lot more writing than this. This is a very short guide. So a glide show is then quite similar to the photo grid we just used. Again, let's just use pick some random images. Motorboard globe is on tour. There we go. Okay, so press save. So as you scroll down, look how cool that looks. And again, you can add in some text. And again, it's starting to look pretty good. Again, you can change your photos. You can change the focal point on what the image will look at as you stream over it. But you can start to see that our blog is starting to take shape. Split layout, again, you can have an image on one side and you can maybe have some text on the other. There you go. So this could be one of your blogs. It could be all of your blogs. The key thing here is to make sure the marker can really interpret what your blogs are about. So I would start with the title to your whole blog and then the title to your blog posts underneath and make sure it's really, really clear. So include underneath that title, images, videos, links, buttons, things we've created in seminars, things you may have seen out in placement, things you may have gone and created in your own time. Make sure that they're demonstrated within this blog. Okay, so say you're happy with your blog now. You can have a play around, obviously, with the settings. Before you publish, you can preview this so you can see what it looks like to anyone that's got the link. It's just loading up now. Again, the only people that are going to see your work 
and the people you share this link with, and you're only going to share it with your seminar tutor. So this is what it looks like. So this is my blog that I've just created in a few moments. It's looking all right. This is not bad. Uh, yeah, and, and you can change all the credits. All these things here you can change. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Again, if you wanted to present, we're not asking you to present, but it's the present function there. What we're interested here is the, once you are ready, once you, this is towards the end of the block, you're ready to publish and share your link. Obviously you need to give it a title. You need to include your name. Don't write your name as in your name. Honestly, you'd be surprised. So you need to write, include your full name blog title so it would be Aole and again if you wanted to include any photo credits you don't have to here it's absolutely fine create the link you're then going to copy this link this link will then be used when you upload the pro forma so we can get access to this this is really really important if we can't get access to your work we cannot mark it it's really important. The other thing you need to do is you need to, in the ad people, add your seminar tutor. Now in your seminars, they will make this very clear. Invite them to edit. Now we're doing this as a backup. We'll be able to see your blogs anyway from the link that you share. This is just to make sure that we can definitely get them. This is really, really important. Again, if we can't get access to these blogs, we can't mark them. It's really important. So we hit invite to edit. And as it says there, you cannot invite yourself. So obviously don't invite yourself, invite your tutors, your seminar tutors. Okay, if you've got any questions, problems, issues, go to your seminar tutor they can go through that with you. What I would start to do is you can start the blogs now. You can start to edit. You can start to think about what uh, blog titles. There are suggested blog titles on there. Again, this is the great thing with this module. You can choose. You have the autonomy. As long as it's linked to the areas of learning experience, you don't have to stick to the suggested blog post. So this is a really, really popular module with students because you have that autonomy. Okay, go and have a play with Adobe Spark page and it's the website and create your own blog.